Hi, this is Matt Houghton for Sound on Sounds. I'm doing a series of video tutorials on Revoice Pro 3.2. Um, one of the things I want to show you is what you can do with the process outputs from Revoice Pro once you've got them back into your door. And one of the things we're often asked about in SOS is how to add a little bit of width to a mono track, and in particular a bass track. Um, let me go back to Cubase where I've got a project set up. You can see there's a, a bass track here. It's just one of the loops I've taken from Cubase's own library. I'll play that to you so that you can hear what I was dealing with. So it's a, a pretty mundane part, but um, a fairly full, dry, mono bass sound. And on the second track, um, and I should say I've got the effects and uh, the inserts and sends bypassed on here, um, this is the result of a doubler process in Revoice Pro. I've just um, attenuated it, as you can see from the envelope here. Um, it's just to balance it against the main part. There's obviously two separate parts playing here and only a single one there. So let's hear what that sounds like. So it's uh, not a bad dry sort of chorus effect really. Now, one of the things that I find with bass is that um, if you apply chorus to it and right across the frequency spectrum is that it, it can lose a little bit of that sort of focus and solidity in the centre. And that's obviously problematic if you try to, um, uh, try to lay the foundations of a mix. Um, so what I like to do is to add a bit of filtering to the doubled parts. Let me just play the two together without any of the processing, just so you can hear the, the effects with the, the width and the, the part playing straight down the centre. It's obviously a bit louder because we've got more parts playing, but you should get the idea. Um, you can hear a part slap in the, in the centre, it's keeping a bit more of that solidity that I talked about there but we've still got the width from this double apart. And you can increase the sense of width by um, increasing the level of that track. Um, but we're still not really there for me. Um, so what I like to do uh, is to apply some filtering. And here we've got um, uh, an instance of Tokyo Dawn's Nova. It's just the high pass and low pass filter that I've got enabled. Let me, uh, the, the low pass is really just to take off some of the uh, uh, there's a sort of rattling that goes on if you if you take too much of the low end out. You just hear all of that and nothing else. So let me just switch the low pass off at the moment. I'm going to roll the high pass right up to the top. And I'm just going to uh, play all of the parts back and roll that high pass filter down so that you can hear what happens as we reveal more of the doubled part. <laughs> So hopefully you can hear, uh, there were a couple of things actually. Firstly, you should have been able to hear the, the sort of twang of the strings and a little bit of the noise that was in the recording at the top as we rolled it down. Um, we got a bit further, we got more of a sense of width, and then as we went right down to the bottom, I, I felt that things just got a little bit confused at the bottom end where everything was playing together. But I quite like where it's ended up at. Um, However, when we collapse that down to mono, we're going to get slight timing differences, um, which is the whole, the whole reason we did the doubler in the first place. Um, but that's going to cause problems because everything's going to be collapsed down to mono. Uh, it's all playing in the center and we've got timing differences between the different parts and that causes a little bit of smearing. So for my next trick, um, what I do is to add um, an instance of Melda's M utility. Um, there are plenty of other plugins you could use for this, but I've got it set up to mid and sides, so the volume left is now controlling the mids, and I've muted those, and the volume right is controlling the sides, and I've just left those alone. So in other words, we've isolated the sides um, element of the of the doubled bass part. That means it's going to disappear when we play it back in mono, um, but when we're playing in stereo, we get the stereo effect. Now, often we talk about the importance of having everything audible in stereo and mono, but I don't really want to do that here. I just want to get a sense of width when we're playing back in stereo, and I just want a nice, natural, tight bass sound when we're playing in mono. So it's kind of like fairy dust for the stereo mix, um, and it handily 
removes all of itself for mono and gets rid of all the problems I just talked about. So let me just play it on its own and you can hear just what the side signal sounds like. Let me take the EQ off. So it's quite thin, tinny sounding on its own, but when you then put that back in with the mono bass part, the original, I don't feel that's bad actually, but I still want some of the filtering on. Now, the thing about that to say is that um, you need to have different filtering. You're going to have to fine tune it whether you're working on just the side signal or the, the full stereo signal. So I don't feel that's bad. Um, there is, however, one other thing that we can do. Um, another little trick is to add a bit of reverb. Again, when you're in stereo, you've probably got a little bit more space to include reverb in your mix, and when you're in mono, it can clutter a little bit. So I like to take the sides doubler um, as the source for our reverb. Um, so let me unmute that. I'll just check that I've got the sends rooted. OK, so here we are. I'll play it back as it is, and then we'll just adjust the level of the reverb. Um, and just so you know what we're using, um, go to here. You can see it's just an instance of Cubase's um, built-in revelation with um, a, a basic hall model. Um, needless to say, it's 100% wet because it's a send effect. So let's uh, let's play that, and we'll adjust the level of the reverb. So hopefully um, you can hear what's going on there. I mean, the, the reverb tail itself is a little bit longer than I'd normally use on bass. I just wanted to make sure it was audible for everybody. Um, what I like about that is that it's, it's kind of, uh, it, it leaves a little bit of that dry bass down the middle and gives a sense of spaciousness around it. Um, and I don't often achieve that just sending straight from the mono bass itself. It's a little bit more subtle to my ears. Um, obviously, you can go in and EQ the uh, the reverb returns as well, and and tighten up just as you you would with any any reverb. But I quite like the result. Um, if I go back, I'll just play the mono part on its own, and I'll play where we arrived at with all of the different processes and effects. <laughs> So that was our boring bass part. Here it is with the doubler, with the um, uh, the filtering, um, the sides only filtering, and the reverb applied. And there we are, that's uh, one technique for adding a bit of width to a bass part um, using Revoice Pro's Stereo Doubler presets.